Welcome back to Intentional with Morel. Um, thank God for another week of Bible study. Uh, I hope you guys are being safe out there. Uh, but let's get into today's um, Bible study. Uh, we're going to begin at 1 Timothy um, First Timothy 6, and we're going to be looking at verse um, 3 through 10, and we're going to be coming out of the NLT, you know, um, lately, I, over the past, last time I came out of the NLT, so t- today I'm going to come out of M- NLT um, again, and we're going to be reading about, um, Paul is talking about the false teaching and the true riches, what is the true riches. Um, so we're going to begin at verse 3, and we're going to go verse by verse. Um, a little old school, but we're going to be going verse by verse. Um, and when I say old school, I mean just, just saying, hey, you know, some people don't like that way. But if you want to learn the scripture, you want to really understand what the text is saying, sometimes it's really good to go verse by verse verse so we're going to be going verse by verse uh, starting at verse 3 and it reads some people may contradict our teaching but these are the wholesome teaching of the lord jesus christ these teachings promote a godly life let's let's look at verse 3 again it says some people may contradict our teaching but these are the wholesome teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Got to look at the word contradict. You know, some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Verse 4 says, anyone who teaches something different is arrogant. The Bible says that. It says, anyone who teaches something different. Is arrogant. Anybody's teaching something different according to the Bible is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to squibble over the meaning of the words. Now the scripture said it says squibble. It says such a person has an unhealthy desire. So this person has an unhealthy desire, like their desire is unhealthy to just to casually misunderstand the scripture or casually lacks understanding of the scripture casually that they're teaching something different than the word of god they're there so in the, the the part of the scripture says such a person has an unhealthy desire to squibble the word squibble uh means uh a slight objection or criticism about a travel tribal matter uh, a tribal matter over the, so so this person is squibbling over the meaning of the words. So this is somebody that can be, <laughs> I hate to use the word, they can be trifling over the word. They they can they can try to make the word say something else. And, and you know, a lot of times people want to make the word say what it, they wanted to say to benefit them. Amen. You know, um, I'm not I'm not getting I'm not going to get personal. Um, what's going on in the world right now Um, but there are some things that some preachers do they will get on the platform and they will make this message benefit them they will make the word benefit them if something they did they will make the scripture work for them instead just teaching what the scripture actually say and not trying to make it benefit them so they are squibbling through the word, they are squibbling, so they're 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 being trifling, <laughs> amen. Um, over the meaning of the words, amen. And the rest of the scripture says in verse four it says, "This stirs up arguments, in it and jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicion." This is what the Bible says. This is this is what will happen. It stirs up arguments. Um, it's in it and jealousy. So you, so when people are being arrogant, teaching something different, what the word says, they're stirring up an argument. They're stir, they're stirring up jealousy, division, um, slander, and evil suspicion. First, I mean, verse five says this: these people always cause trouble. This is Paul talking. This is Paul um, talking to the Timothy. Um, yet true. I mean, what? Verse 5 says this. Verse 5 says, These people always cause trouble. Their minds 
are corrupt. This is what Paul's saying. Their minds are corrupt. They have turned their backs on to the truth. They have turned their back on the truth to show them a to them a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. You got to get that part. A show of godliness. This is how they have turned their back from the truth. And now they feel like if they just show a godliness to, to people, to people that will believe that they are truly a man of God or truly a woman of God, if they just show a, a godliness, it would just it's a, just a way to become wealthy. So is there, is there a way to just to keep um, bringing, getting money or gaining money and gaining success? by just showing a godliness but they're corrupt they're teaching another bible they're not teaching the word of god the right way they're arrogant and they lack understanding L let's look at um verse five in the niv version it said and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed now niv said it, it said who have been robbed of the truth now in verse 5, in the NLT version said, and they have turned their backs on the truth. Verse 5 in the NIV said, who have been robbed of the truth and who think their godliness is a means to financial gain. So they're thinking their godliness, by showing a little godliness, by doing a little good deed, doing some good service, doing, the, doing some outreach, doing some amazing work in the community they feel like oh i'm showing some godliness even though their teaching is all off their teaching is so wrong because the godliness is just for them to have a, a financial gain that preacher wanted that financial gain that financial success by just showing a little godliness even though they don't believe what they're teaching they're teaching something different amen Look at verse 6 in uh, NLT. Verse 6 says, Yet true, and look, listen to this, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Let's read verse 6 in NIV. It said, But godliness with contentment, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. Let's read the NLT again. Yet true godliness. The Bible says, yet true godliness, not false godliness, not showing a little godliness to become wealthy, to have to, to keep your your to keep money coming in. But the Bible said, yet true godliness with contentment, content, being content, content in that season, being content with what you have. It said contentment is itself great wealth. So you're so I'm saying the scripture is saying. When you're content, you can access wealth. You have access wealth when you are content. Amen. Verse seven. We got a couple more scriptures. Um, verse seven says, "After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it." Now, this is this is this is good. You gotta listen to that. After all, we brought nothing with us. We, we didn't bring nothing in this world. We didn't bring nothing. And when we came into the world, and when we can't take any and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So all that financial gain that you're trying to deceive people to get more money, you can't take it with you. Amen. And believe me. If you're deceiving people and false teaching, I don't know. I'm not the. I'm not God. I'm not the judge, but I believe you're deceiving people, and and you might say you did it in the name. You did all these things, but you're false teaching. You're not teaching true word of God. You're arrogant and you lack understanding. And you're, you're, you're teaching things, and as it says in verse 4, it said, anyone who teaches something different, different, word of God, anybody's teaching anything that's different from the word of God, 
Let me say that anyone that's teaching something different from the word of God, the scripture says it's arrogant and lacks understanding. Let's let's read verse four. And I'm gonna, we're going to go back to verse four. We're going to come back to verse seven. We're going to mean verse six, verse six. We're going to come back to verse six. But let's read verse four again. Let's let's go back to verse four. But what, I want to read the NIV version. And it says they are conceited and understand nothing. This is what verse four says in NIV. It said they are conceited. They con they conceited. They're proud. You know, um, we, we, ha we have talked about conceited several times um, in different Bible studies. And I broke down conceited, the word conceited. And, and, and the word conceited just means somebody's proud of oneself, that they think they're better than somebody else. They're, they're, they're proud of themselves. So verse four said they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversy and squirrel about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicion. Amen. So this is someone that's teaching a different. This is someone that's teaching different than the word of God. But they also are doing what? That What did we read in verse 5? I'm going to read the last part of verse 5. It said, to them, a show of godliness is, a, is just a way to become wealthy. So that teacher is saying, that teacher, as long as they show a little godliness, they can keep their wealth. They can they can keep their wealth. But verse six says, "Yet true godliness, true godliness, with contentment, is 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 itself great wealth." So, true godliness, true true godliness, you will access as long as you have contentment. You're being you're content. You will access great wealth. Amen. So let's look at verse seven. Look at verse seven. It said, after all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world. Oh, we just read that. Let's go to verse eight. It said, verse eight says, so if we have enough food mm -hmm, and clothing, let us be content. Oh, you, you, you mean, wait a minute, content? That's content? I don't, oh my gosh. You mean just having enough food and clothing? You thought I was going to say, oh, you have millions of dollars. That's wealth. But so if we have enough food and clothing, this is the scripture. It says this verse eight. Go go read it for yourself. This is the NLT. You can read NIV. You can read KJV. You can read whatever version you want to read. ESV, NKJV. Go read it. Verse eight says this. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Ah, oh, be content. Got enough food. Got enough clothing. Amen. Amen. That's 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 content. Be content. That's that's great wealth. You got enough food. You got enough clothing. You got somewhere to lay your head down. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You got a job to work. Amen. Be content. Don't get into comparison. When people that cannot be content is because they're looking at other people's life and they're wondering how did they get that way? How did they get to that sudden position in life? But when you're content with God got you in your season, amen, you wouldn't worry about what somebody else, you just be content, amen. God bless you, amen. Look at verse nine. But people who long to be rich, uh -huh, listen there, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin, destruction. Look at verse 10. Everybody quote this scripture, probably misquoted a lot too. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, that's a period. That's, a, that's the end of the sentence. But this is all in verse 10. It says, and some people craving money have wonder." From the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrow. So when I looked at this scripture, I was like, oh, it's talking about people that are believers. 
you know, sometimes we use it for everybody. You know, it don't matter who they are. You know, they can be evil and we say, oh, they they did more evil stuff to get more money. But this really seems like it's talking about believers because he said, and some people craving money have wonder from the true faith. This is somebody that have wonder from the faith. This is somebody that was a believer. It says, have wonder from the true faith and pierce themselves with many sorrows. Now, the word sorrow means a feeling of deep distress caused by lost disappointment or misfortune suffered by oneself or others. Now, some of the similar words you can use with um, sorrows is sadness, unhappiness, depression, low spirits, and regrets. And there's some more similar words you can use, but those are just some of the ones that I highlighted that you can say with sorrow. Now, let's read verse 10. Let's read it again. For the love of money... No, let's read verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. Let's make sure we get to verse 9. But people who loan to be rich, somebody that loan to be rich, fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. Amen. We don't want to make sure as if you are a preacher, minister, or whatever your platform is or whatever you're doing, you don't want to use that platform to say, I'm trying to get rich. I'm using God to get rich. And, and, and guess what? You will see yourself fall into so many temptations. Don't use your platform for your come up. Don't use God's platform for the come up. Oh, I'm trying to come up. I'm trying to be rich. I'm going to use God. I'm going to use some godliness. Show some godliness to, to get wealth. Amen. But we need to be what? True godliness with contentment. 